be on the reef until we get permission to bring him ashore. For a moment, I thought you were abandoning me. Ben Armand Dego does not abandon his friends in the face of stupid suicidal danger. However, as Monsieur Morel's official representative on this voyage, Edmond, I must officially tell you you have overstepped your bounds as second mate. Officially. There, I've covered myself. If we don't get him to a doctor, he will die. Do you understand? Of course I understand. Just don't expect me to do this sober. What? English dragoons. Dante Stones. A little careless, don't we you? We have to talk to someone. Well, I know. We're French sailors! We seek medical on. attention! Come on. We come in peace! Come on, come on! We mean no harm! Come on! Thirst for gore demands the death of these poor fools, then by all means shoot them. But do so with the knowledge they are no agents of mine. Now explain yourselves or be shot. Sir, I am Edmund Dantes, second mate of the merchant ship very own, on our way home to Marseille. This is the ship owner's representative, Monsieur Fernand Mondego, son of the Count Mondego. Our captain has contracted brain fever, so we put in here for help. If his coma is genuine, he won't feel my knife point, will he? Only a scratch. Come on! Lieutenant Great Paul! We came to you in good faith! That's for my wounded men. And wounded pride, no doubt. Eventful evening. If I hadn't have shot those dragoons, you might be lying in pieces on the beach right now. I almost got us killed. Yes, you did. Yet, we survive. Things to you, Mondego. Being your friend is always an adventure. <laughs> yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> it's a pity adventurous can't always be friends, though, huh? What? Well, it won't always be like this, will it? What are you talking about? <sighs> Nothing. Drink up. We're drinking Napoleon Bonaparte's <laughs> wine. I think you'll find the 1806 of the finer vintage. As long as you're still awake, Monsieur Dantes, I wonder if I might have a word with you. I'm curious. What's the significance of the chess piece? Oh. It's just something we've done since childhood. Um, whenever one of us has had a victory, king of the moment. King of the moment? <laughs> In life, we're all either kings or pawns. I'm moved by your effort to save your captain's life, Dantes. He is my captain and my friend, Your Majesty. Loyal friends are rare indeed. In fact, it's upon such a matter I wish to speak. I've written a rather sentimental letter to an old comrade in Marseille. 
It's a side of me I prefer the British not see, and since they have a habit of opening my mail, I wonder if you would deliver it for me. Oh, I, I don't... It's just a letter from one old soldier to another. It is totally innocent, I assure you. But more important, it is the price I demand for the use of my physician. Then I agree. Good. You are to deliver the letter to Monsieur Clarion. Can you remember that name? Monsieur Clarion? How will I find him? Oh, he will find you. No, I do not wish this letter's existence to be known to anyone else. Not even your boon companion back there, do you understand? I'm a man of my word, Your Majesty. Yes, I, uh, I believe you are. What does he want? Oh, um, news from France. That's all. Field as I, young Dantes. You can feel death. Kings and pawns, Marshal. Emperors and fools. What's happened? Captain Renault is dead, sir. And Edmund Dantes disobeyed my orders. Come to my office and report, Danglars. And you, Edmond. Uh, will you be needing me, Monsieur Morel? Go. Mercedes. Where is he? Where is Edmond? Uh, lovely to see you, too. I just missed him, I'm afraid. Could be a while. I think he's in trouble. He said he'd meet us by the rock. Come on. I told Dantes not to go ashore. Is this true? I accept all responsibility. That's what you should. It was all his idea, Monsieur. It should have been your idea. Putting into Elba didn't save the captain's life, Monsieur. I was protecting the merchandise. You were protecting yourself. I hide it behind your rank and staying aboard. Edmond Dantes, I am making you the new captain of the Farion. You presume to demote me? There is no demotion. You will remain first mate under Captain Dantes. Uh, unless, of course, you choose to seek another berth. There's a certain young lady who will want to hear this news. Thank you. Mr. Morel, I understand you had a ship just returned from Elba, monsieur. Yes. Did anyone aboard? get to shore there by any chance. They did, but they're not here at the moment. Thank you, monsieur. 
May I say who's called upon them? Clarion. The name is Clarion. Make love to me. Will you ever give up? He doesn't have to know. I'd know. So would I. Maybe our little secret. I don't believe in secrets. You think Edmond doesn't have secrets? He does. Ask him. I know what you want, Fanon. You do? Remember when we were little kids and Edmund got that whistle for his birthday and you got a pony? Well, you were so mad that Edmund was happier with his whistle than you were with your pony. And I'm not going to be your next whistle. How long do you think it's going to be before he can afford a wife? Two years. Two years, that's all. Then he gets his captain's papers and we can marry. Two years. I couldn't wait two years for anything. Particularly a bride like you. Hey! There he is. Hey! Let's say this! <laughs> So. Missing is over now. Are you in trouble? No, I'm captain. Come on. <sighs> Monsieur Morel gave me the ferry home. Edmund. Kings to me. <laughs> Meals is alive. Truly blessed, Edmond. You're still the best man. I know. Come on. tell you. We don't have to wait two years anymore. As soon as I can afford the ring, we'll I don't wait. need a ring. I don't. This'll be my ring. And no matter what happens, you will never see it off my finger. Fine young gentleman. Care to join me? Tell me, Mondego. How did you ever become friends with that righteous little Ponce Mondantes? He claims to be my friend. He has the audacity to keep secrets from me. What secrets? The new captain of the Fayon. All I am, I owe to you, Father. May this happy moment be but the dawn of a long and wonderful life for you both. Which of you is Edmund Dantes? I am. Edmund Dantes, you're under arrest by order of the Magistrate of Marseille. Arrest? On what charges? That information is privileged. 
Take him. I demand an explanation. I demand an explanation! I'll be back tonight. Don't worry, Father, this is a mistake. Undoing. Say, Dantes, you don't have the look of a traitor. Traitor? No. Tend me well, Dantes, for your life may depend on it. Did you have any personal contact with Napoleon when you were on Elba? Elba? Yes, I did. Well, we did. I was with the Count Mondego's son, Fernand, almost the entire time. Do you know Fernand? He's a recent acquaintance, yes. Oh. There you are. He'll vouch for me. No doubt, but you said almost the entire time. Except from when Napoleon asked me to deliver a personal letter to a friend in Marseille. Well, that... Antes, it is for accepting that treasonous correspondence that you have been denounced by your own first mate, Monsieur Danglars. What? Now, did you deliver the letter? No, sir. Someone was supposed to find me. It's, it's still in my jacket. Here. Have you read this? No, sir. I, I can't read. Well, Dantes, this is a letter to one of Napoleon's agents. It gives the times and the locations of the British beach patrols on Elba. Sir, I swear on my mother's grave. I had no idea he swore its contents were innocent. No. It's you that's innocent. Foolish and innocent. I believe these are the worst charges that could be leveled against you. Fortunately, as I've intercepted this document, there's no harm done. God knows how you're going to survive in this world, Edmond Dantes, but you are no traitor. You may go. Thank you, sir. Wait, uh... Did Napoleon tell you who was supposed to pick up the letter? Monsieur Clarion. What, what name did you say? Monsieur Clarion. Have you mentioned this name to anyone else? Monsieur Mondego or anyone? No, sir. In fact, Monsieur Mondego knows nothing of this letter. This is very dangerous information. One can never be too careful at times like this. Don't you think? Yes, sir. Mm. I've given you rather a stressful time. I wonder if, by way of an apology, I could offer you my courage home. It's just through here. Monsieur Villefort, Monsieur Villefort, Monsieur Villefort. I'm allowed to go home. From now on, you're home at the prison Chateau Deep. No! No! Ah! No! no!
It's all right. It's right here. For now, I've been arrested for treason. I barely managed to escape. When we were on Elba, Napoleon gave me a letter. I didn't tell you because he made me promise not to. Said it was just a note to an old friend, but the bastard lied to me. He lied. It was to one of his agents. Well, somehow the authorities found out. I don't, I don't know what to do. There's gendarmes on horseback right behind me. All right, I just have to think. I hope I haven't compromised you. I was hoping your father could help me. He's in Paris. He's very ill. How far back are the gendarmes? Minutes. Do you need money? Yes, thank you. Do you have a pistol? Of course not. Good. Stop it, Fanon. I don't have time for this. I saw Napoleon give you that letter. It was you? Well, it wasn't just me. It was Danglars' idea. Why didn't you come to me first? Well, why did you keep it a secret from me? I thought you were my friend. I told you I gave Napoleon my word. He lied to me. I know, Edmond. I read the letter. You, you read? Why are you doing this? Oh, it's complicated. Complicated. Don't be ridiculous. Get out of my way. I can't let you go, anymore. I'm not supposed to want to be you. In here. Yeah, yeah. Get. Wait. Oh. To remember better days. I told you it wasn't always going to be this way, Edmund. Father? Where is he? Daddy. What's he done now? Now you listen to me, Father. I am the chief magistrate and official of the new regime, and I cannot afford to have my own father mixed up in treasonous affairs. No, no. <laughs> in the end, treason is a matter of dates. And I shall be the patriot, and you the traitor, when the emperor returns. Stop it. Stop it, you old ruin. Those days are over. Napoleon Bonaparte's no longer the emperor of anything. And if you continue to dabble in this lunacy, you run an excellent chance of being arrested and ruining our entire family, all because of your idiotic sympathies. Well, at least I have sympathies. God's sake, Father. All Valentina is saying is that as a family, our fates are intertwined. Surely you can see that. See? Ah. I'm an old ruin. I don't see as well as I did. You will excuse me.
Welcome, Monsieur Dantes. I am Armand Doliac, the warden of Chateau Deep. <coughs> Monsieur, I know you must hear this a great deal. But I assure you, I am innocent. <laughs> Everyone must say that, I know, but I truly am. Innocent? Yes. I know. I really do know. You mock me? No, my dear Dantes. I know perfectly well that you are innocent. Why else would you be here? If you were truly guilty, there are a hundred prisons in France where they would lock you away. But Chateau d'If is where they put the ones they're ashamed of. Let's have a look at your quarters now, shall we? God will give me justice. People are always trying to motivate themselves. Or they keep calendars. But soon they lose interest. Or they die. And There's a window. And all I'm left with is a rather unsightly wall, I'm afraid. So, I've conceived of another way to help our prisoners keep track of time. Every year, on the anniversary of their imprisonment, we hurt them. Usually just a simple beating, really. Although, on their first day here, in your case, today, I like to do something rather special. <laughs> and if you're thinking just now, why me, oh God? The answer is, God has nothing to do with it. In fact, God is never in France this time of year. God has everything to do with it. He's everywhere. He sees everything. All right. Let's make a bargain, shall we? You ask God for help, and I'll stop the moment he shows up. Tell that idiot clerk to find the ledger. We are here to plead the case of Edmond Dantes. Not now. Dantes. We have not met, monsieur. I am Fernand Mondego, the son of Count Mondego. And I am here to swear to Edmond Dantes' innocence. This is his employer, Monsieur Morel, his father, and his fiancé, Mercedes. Edmond Dantes is charged with high treason. And yet you stand by him? Of course I do. What if I was to tell you that Dantes is also charged with murder? Murder? Edmond would never do such a thing. Dantes carried a letter from Napoleon to one of his agents, and when we tried to arrest him, he killed one of my men. No, if you knew him, monsieur, you would know that was not possible. Have mercy, please. You have proof of this treason. Well, that is government business. Please, please just tell us where he is. I cannot, mademoiselle. He was handed over to the king's men. Uh, I can understand your pain at this betrayal, but my advice to all of you would be to forget Edmond Dantes, particularly you, mademoiselle. Take solace in the comfort of your good friend here, and perhaps some good may yet come of this unhappy affair. Now, you will excuse me. I have to attend to some other matters. My son is no traitor. I will try to reason with him first. Say if you leave this to Never, Fernand. It's impossible. I can plead never. The case. I will not give up on Edmond yet. I will never forget your kindness. And I shall never cease to give it. Not that I don't appreciate the embroidery of the crimes. Still. Murder. It's quite simple, really. 
When you reported Dantes as receiving the letter to me, I didn't quite understand why you were betraying him. But now, having seen his exquisite fiance, I understand completely. What prompts you to be so accommodating? Sit down, Mondego. Happy anniversary, Dante's. Until next year. Has it really been four years, Daly? For Don Tom? What is his name again? Forgive my intrusion, uh, but I was 
under the impression that I, I was digging towards the outer wall. Parlez-vous anglais? Italiano? I am Abbe Faria. I have been a prisoner in Chateau d'If for 11 years, five which have been spent digging this tunnel. <laughs> At 72,519 stones in my walls. I've counted them many times. But have you named them yet? Once I was as you are now, but I promise it will pass. I promise, I promise. Now, may I stand on your shoulders? There are only two possibilities of reaching the outer wall and finally the sea. I simply, I simply chose the wrong one. Now, of course, with two of us, we could dig in the opposite direction. And with both of us together, then of course, we could possibly do it in, um, oh, eight years. <laughs> oh, and there's something else to mount your time. Some pressing appointment, perhaps? <laughs> In return, for your help, I offer something priceless. My freedom. Freedom can be taken away. As you well know, I offer knowledge. Everything I have learned. I will teach you oh, economics, mathematics, philosophy, science. To read and write. Start. Come on. The slot opens twice a day. Once for your toilet bucket, which is where we hide the dirt. And once in the evening for your plate. Excellent. 
So you were in Napoleon's army. We had such dreams then. However, one night, my regiment ran down a band of guerrillas who ran into a church for sanctuary. I was ordered to burn down the church with them inside it. Did you? To my everlasting shame, I did. I did. How did you come to be here? The following day, I deserted to devote my life to repentance and to God. I worked as private secretary to the enormously wealthy Count Enrique Sparda. Sparda was a righteous man. Sadly, a couple of years later, he died amidst rumors that he had hidden his limitless fortune. Oh. Two weeks later, I was arrested. Why? Napoleon wanted Sparta's treasure. He did not believe. Well, I had no idea where it was. So he had me thrown in here to refresh my memory. And so here I've remained with only God for company until he sent me you. God is no more real than your treasure, priest. Perhaps. Compute this. 2,500 cubic centimeters of rock and dust per day for 365 days. Equals three and a half meters a year. 12 feet, foot a month, three inches a week. In Italian. Ancora tre metri e un mezzo. the light you are a soldier priest so you know weaponry oh. Oh. teach me or take a loan You force me to walk a fine line, don't you? This is ridiculous. The stronger swordsman does not necessarily win. It is speed. Speed of hand. Speed of mind. Sweep your hand through the drought without getting wet. Hot, lightly. How long must I keep this up? I am going down the tunnel. Define economics. Economics is a science that deals with the production, distribution, and consumption of commodities. Translation. Take first, money later. Give me a 
find it. Don't go out. One day ago. What do you think? Newton's third law. There is a reaction to every action in physics and in man. Thus, my quest for vengeance is a reaction to the actions of Danglar and Mondego. Up, up. I want that seat. You once told me the Villefort had you rearrested just after he had cleared you of all the charges. Him again. Yes, that's true. Then why would he go through that charade? Unless he had reason to change his mind about letting you go. Think, Edmond. <laughs> I'm trying. What happened? He asked me, did Napoleon tell you he was supposed to pick up this letter? I told him. I'm Monsieur Clarion. And nothing more. Nothing. He burnt the letter and said I could go. He burned the letter. Yes. Strange that a chief magistrate would burn evidence of a treasonous conspiracy and then imprison the only man who was aware of Monsieur Clarion's connection to that conspiracy. He was protecting someone. A dear friend, perhaps? No. No. A politician like Villefort would have rid himself of such friends. Clarion could be a relative. A close relative, possibly. Villefort's father was a colonel in Napoleon's army. Villefort wasn't protecting Clarion. He was protecting himself. Danglars, who falsely said he saw Napoleon get in there. Mondego, who told Villefort I had it. And Villefort himself, who sent me here. Bravo, Edmond. Bravo. Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. Light! Light, quick, light! Oh, please God. What is that? Look, look, look! Roots, plant roots. If these are plant roots, then we are only months away. Yes. Well done, Prince. I'll get my chisel. Get Good. Good. Those books, there's loose 
those rocks. Bring me what you found. Quickly, quickly. Oh, Oberlin. When I told them, I did not know what the treasure of Sparta was. I lied. You lied? I'm a priest, not a saint. Bill, on their island off the Italian coast. Monte Cristo? Yes. Use. Use your head. Follow the clue. The tunnel's blocked. I can't Keep escape. Keep digging. When you escape, use it for good. Only for good. No, I will surely use it for my revenge. Uh, here now is your final lesson. Do not commit... Oh, do, do not commit the crime for which you now serve the sentence. God said, vengeance is mine. I don't believe in God. It doesn't matter. He believes in you. Priest. Plates out. Let's have a... First time in 12 years he hasn't said thank you. Dead. Oh. Fell over his bed, didn't he? He's a bit dirty, isn't he? They all are. Well, it's same up. The then see to all the egg. Right, let's get to it, yeah. Why'd you like it? He's not going anywhere. I don't know. Have it, I suppose. Yeah. 
Evans. Whatever his name was. Oh, I'm so bored. Did he, in fact, have a map? No, girl. Where's the, uh... We throw him on three or before three. After three. One. Two. Mission Dolly. Right. Stop, Mission Dolly. Two. Two. Throw the body over. Could have handled that a bit better. So, Mia Mice, I would ask who you are, but in view of your shredded clothes and the fact that the Chateau d'If is two miles away, what's the point? As for me, I am Luigi Vampa, a smuggler and a thief. My men and I have come to this island to bury alive one of our number who attempted to keep some stolen gold for himself instead of uh, sharing it with his comrades. Interestingly enough, there are some of his more loyal friends who are insisting that I grant him mercy. Which, of course, I cannot do, or I will quickly lose control of the old crew. That's why you are such a fortunate find. Why is that? You provide me with a way to show a little mercy to Jacopo, that maggot you see tied up over there, while at the same time not appearing weak. And as a special treat, the lads will get to see a little sport as well. How do I accomplish all this? We watch you and Jacopo fight to the death. If Jacopo wins, we welcome him back to the crew. If you win, I have given Jacopo the chance to leave, even if he did not take advantage of it, and you can take his place on the boat. What if I win and I don't want to be a smuggler? Then we slit your throat and we're a bit short-handed. If 
Fine smuggling is the life for me and would be delighted to kill your friend the maggot. Oh, uh, by the way, Jacobo is the best knife fighter I've ever seen. Perhaps you should get out more. <laughs> Release Jacobo and give him back his knife. Then we'll let the games begin. <laughs> Not move an eyelash. Senor Vampa, allow Jacopo to live. He's already suffered enough with the prospect of being buried alive. The men that wanted to see some sport have seen it. Those who wanted mercy for Jacopo will get it. And by keeping me in Jacopo, you will have yet another skilled sailor and fighter for your crew. It's a deal. What is his name? His name? We should call him Zatara. Sounds fearsome. It means driftwood. <laughs> I swear on my dead relatives, even on the ones that are not feeling too good, I am your man forever. I know. in the back of your head. <laughs> Have you never seen Marseille before? It was my home. But you do not join the others ashore. Listen to me, Zatara. Whatever happened to you, you cannot make it right by staying here on this boat. Go. It's up to you. We are kings or pawns, a man once said. See, si. who told you this? Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs> Bonaparte! <laughs> oh, Zatara, the stories you tell. <laughs> Someday I may come to find you. A man is always in need of a good friend. Truly. visit alone. Is, is this the home of Monsieur Moreau? My grandfather is not well, Monsieur. Even if he were, he would not receive visitors at 11 o'clock in the evening. Perhaps he might make an exception for a man who is seeking Ed Edmond Dantes. I apologize for the hour. Old people never sleep. Sit down, sit down. Julianne. Some sherry. <sighs> so, Monsieur Zatara, you were a friend of Edmond. Monsieur Morel? Yes.
You knew. Edmond also. Like a son. I was hoping you could tell me where to find his family. Unfortunately, his father hanged himself after learning of Edmond's treason. I see. Um, this treason you speak of, who accused him? Who knows? Monsieur Villefort, the man who had Edmond arrested, left for Paris soon after to take up the post of chief prosecutor. Of course, the shock of his father's violent murder may also have spurred his departure. They were strange times. You seem to have fallen on difficult times yourself, sir. After Edmond's death, I reluctantly took on a partner. One of my captains. And then one day, Danglars forced me out. My fate is nothing compared to Edmond's. Perhaps your luck is about to change. Uh, shall search out Edmond's fiancée. You mean the Countess Mondego? Countess? Yes. A month after poor Edmond was arrested, Mercedes wed his best friend. Fernand? Yes, that's right. And with the death of his father and brother in the war, Fernand became Count Mondego. They live in Paris now. Count and Countess Mondego. Are you all right? Yes. I must go. I'm sorry I was not more helpful. Oh, no. You told me what I needed to know. Edmond, Countess is dead. Tatara, Tatara, you will be so proud of me. I found a nice little skiff. We couldn't afford a sloop. Got a really good deal. Tatara? Tatara.
Tatara. The boat cannot hold no more, and there are at least eight more boatloads down there. Do you not understand? You are wealthier than any man I have ever heard of. Whatever your problems were, they are over. What do you want to buy? Revenge. Okay, revenge. Who? Dong Lao, beautiful. Fernand and Mercedes. Right. We kill these people, then we spend the treasure. No, we will study them. Learn their weaknesses. Why not just kill them? I'll do it. I run up to Paris, bam, 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 bam. I'm back before week's end. We spend the treasure. How is this a bad plan? Death is too good for them. They must suffer as I suffered. They must see their world, all they hold dear, ripped from them as it was ripped from me. You would need a better name than Tatara if you are to accomplish that. Then I shall become a count. I bid you good afternoon, sir. I'm here to purchase your lovely home. Cheek. I shall have you horse whipped. Now get off my property, you vagabond, before I set the dogs on you. You hear? Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor that I present to you His Grace, the Count of Monte Cristo. things.
My dear Count, allow me to introduce to you my husband, Monsieur Villefort, Chief Prosecutor. Very kind of you to think of us. Oh, I am the one honored with your presence. Now, please enjoy yourselves tonight. What do we know about him? Not enough. Where are they? Are you sure you invited them? Yes, Your Grace. But I just learned that Count Monego has retired for the evening. He has a morning appointment he cannot miss. You're up early, my dear. Is the Viscount Tourville dead? Well, unless his heart is situated somewhere other than the left side of his chest, I suspect he is. God grant him peace. He did no more than defend his family's honor. Much good it did him. His wife and I were happy in our passion. You were happy in your ignorance. Now comes the Viscount's valiant defense of his honor, and you are pained. She is ruined, and he is dead. Don't flatter yourself, Fernand. I was neither happy nor ignorant, having known about the last three women before Madame Tourville. I'm sorry you are humiliated. The combination of Paris and me is hardly a recipe for fidelity, is it? And since my attempts at discretion have evidently failed, there seems little point in keeping up pretenses. It's actually quite liberating, wouldn't you say? His finances. He's losing money at the other casinos. They're not even cheating him. And have you looked into his shipping? He got a bank loan for his own boat several years ago. Doesn't use Dunglars at all. Make sure we own that bank by tomorrow. And tell the other shipping companies to stay away from Mondego. I want to give him no choice but to crawl back to Dangla now. Tell the dealers. Take it all. Do try to understand. I have a very large consignment of cotton ready to be sent. And I shall make my payment on the ship as soon as it is delivered. So obviously I need the vessel in order to deliver it. Unfortunately, the bank can offer no further extensions, Count Mondego. I suggest you find alternate means of shipping. Well, well. To what do I owe the honor, Count Mondego? I can't imagine why you've been avoiding me after all these years. I'm prepared to overlook your faults and perhaps resume our dealings. Business not going as well these days. Satara! After 13 years of sleeping on a stone slab, I can't... Hey, Maria, does that hurt? Did you come here for a reason? Mondego has a son. Albert wishes to talk with us. Not now. Tell him I'm trying to protect his inheritance. Oh, are you afraid he's going to squander his as you have yours? It's funny, I don't recall hearing your complaints when I elevated you from being a fishmonger's daughter. Now, please, I must finish this, and then I shall be going out. May I remind you, my love, that in Paris their mistresses are plenty, but you have only one son. Come in, Albert. For God's sake, be brief. I will, Father. Several of my friends are going to Rome for two weeks during carnival. 
I'd like to accompany them. Rome? And no chaperones. I'm you only 15. Almost 16. Make it my birthday present, Father. Please. I won't get into trouble. No. Of course you can go. I can do with some peace and quiet around here. We are bad men, and for the money. The money is in my waistcoat. Not anymore. Besides, it's not your money we're interested in. You are the only son of Count Mondego, are you not? Ransom. Send your note and be damned. I wish it were that easy, but the note won't reach your father for at least two weeks, and then there's the endless debates about whether we killed you already. No. A note just doesn't have the impact. Perhaps if we send him your ring. Yes. My ring bears the Mondego crest. While still attached to your finger? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, Vermin. I am Albert, son of Fernand, Count Mondego. And you have had your last laugh at my expense. Do your worst. If you insist. Peponi, the knife. or I will be forced to start cutting your miserable corpses. Now! Follow me, young man. Do you see the surface? Wait for me there. I don't know no. how to thank you. We'll talk later. Well done, gentlemen. Many thanks, Your Grace. Bear. Are you all right? Sir, are you my life? You've had quite an ordeal. You're an extraordinary young man. I insist. You must come to my estate for breakfast tomorrow. Agreed? Agreed. May I ask who you are, sir? For the present, your friend. Tomorrow, your host. The short time formality stands between us, Count Monte Cristo. Show courage in the tunnel. He's a means to an end. Yes, Your Grace. Young man. Albert, come in. Come, come. 
Come. You've had quite a night. Yes. What an adventure. Everything's an adventure when you're young. One thing puzzles me, sir. Mm. How did you come to know of my kidnapping? I have many connections, some of which are less than reputable. I pay well to be informed of anything of note in any city in which I stay. And the kidnapping of a count's son is of note. But why risk your life rescuing me? You're the son of a fellow noble. It was the least I could do. Judging by your character, I'm sure you would have done the same. Your father would be proud of you. You must come to Paris and meet my parents, so that they may thank you in person. Unfortunately, I cannot. Business, you see. Please. It is a matter of honor. Jacopo. Yes, Your Grace. The Sparta matter. Where do we stand? Even now, the gold... Shipment? Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry, Your Grace. The, uh, the shipment is in transit, uh, bound for Marseille. And it arrives? Uh, not for another three weeks, Your Grace. Three weeks? That's more than enough time to visit in Paris. Very well. Excellent. And you'll be there just in time. In time for? Present the Count of Monte Cristo. It is a pleasure. Pleasure is mine, Count Mondego. I've been looking forward to this moment for some time. Well, you do me much honor. When it is I who are indebted to you for the rescue of my son. May I present the Countess Mondego? Mercedes. You would have to be a mother to truly appreciate the service you've done for my son and me. Monsieur, I shall never forget you. Please, madame. It was nothing. I am sure that within a month, you will not even remember my name. Hmm? May I steal your wife? I'm sorry? For the walls. Of course. Isn't you wonderful, Father? What's the matter? Mm, nothing. You just remind me of someone from long ago. Someone was very dear to me. I'm flattered. What happened to him? He died. But I'm not that man. Monsieur and Madame <laughs> Finfor. What are they doing here? Prosecutor Villefort, what are you doing here? Oh, Madame Villefort, Monsieur, I'm so glad you could come to see me while I'm still in town. I say we're delightfully surprised to get your news. Thank you. Now, would you be so kind as to excuse your husband and I for a moment? 
I'm told you are an expert in the interpretation of the law. I have a certain matter that perhaps you could help me with. Excuse me. Fennel. Fennel! A toast! Not right now. I have state business to attend to. The guests expect it. Albert expects it. You give it, my dear. I'm sure it'll be splendid. You are his father. That is the least you can do. You know how he admires you. Then he will forgive my absence. But... I thought we agreed not to meet socially. How could I pass up the Count of Monte Cristo? Quiet. What do you know of him? He's foreign. Rich. I hear he aided your son. Why does he seek your counsel? Why should I tell you? When my son returned from Rome, he mentioned he'd heard Monte Cristo saying he was expecting a shipment. He also heard the words of gold and Sparta. Hmm. You don't believe Monte Cristo has found the treasure of Sparta? About an hour ago, he asked me to help him avoid troublesome inspections on a shipment coming from Marseille. Hmm. I could have him arrested. Don't do that. Let's just relieve him of it. How do you propose? I have an acquaintance who deals in these matters. Tell Monte Cristo you'll get his shipment through customs, but that it will have to stay in port overnight. I shall have it removed and taken to my old family estate in Bouchon, where we shall meet the following day. I require 70%. And yet you'll only get 50. Done. Gentlemen, unfortunately, my husband has been detained by business, and so it is left up to me to introduce you to the Count of Monte Cristo yet again. You see, I had the audacity to beg the Count to allow me to give the birthday toast to Albert. I was so insistent, and such is the graciousness of our host that he reluctantly gave up his fatherly right in order to accommodate a guest, even one as boorish as myself. Oh. Young Albert has made far too much of the assistance I gave him in Rome. When I arrived in the catacombs, I watched as the criminals who tied Albert to a wall threatened to cut off his finger and send it to his father as evidence of his abduction. Goodness. The boy's reply to all this was, do your worst. Life is a storm, my young friend. You will bask in the sunlight one moment, be shattered on the rocks the next. What makes you a man is what you do when that storm comes. You must look into that storm and shout as you did in Rome. Do your worst, for I will do mine. Then the fates will know you as we know you, as Albert Mondego. The man.
Info told me that you were executed. Did he? Oh, God. Countess, you are mistaken. Back to the Mondego. No. Madame, I'm only thinking of I beg of you, Edmond. I don't care. I am not this Edmond. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> What are you? A spirit. Some ghost sent to torment me. The sad man. You loved him. Yes. For how long? For all of my life. And how long after he died before you married the Count? That isn't fair. We've reached your home, Countess. You're right. You cannot be my Edmund. Oh, there you are. You said it yourself. Edmund Dantes is dead. Good night. If you ever again presume to interfere in my affairs, I will, I promise, finish the job I started the day we met. Do you understand? I understand you are mad. Mad? My enemies are falling into my traps perfectly. Mad, Your Grace, for ignoring this. You have a fortune. A beautiful woman who loves you. Take the money, take the woman, and live your life. Stop this plan. Take what you have won. I can't. Why not? Still your man, Satara. I swore an oath. I will protect you. Even if it means I must protect you from yourself. I'll drive you home now. I'll walk. chests on the ferry on for our cut. On day though, I'll never notice. Charged with the theft of goods from a certain merchant ship. This is absurd. We can resolve this matter easily. These men will perform a search of your vessel. Count Mondego set me up. But I'll not hang for him. I'm the Count of Monte Cristo, but my friends call me Edmond Dantes. Dantes. Cut him down before he can't talk.
Boy, don't do that. That's that's too much. My dear Vilfo, I hope you don't mind if I join you for a short while. Your Grace, I was not expecting you. I want to thank you in person for helping me with my shipment. That, yes, I, I made all the arrangements earlier. I can promise you there'll be no more problems from our end. Excellent. I think this could be the start of a long and fruitful relationship. Speaking of which, May I pose a question? Yes, of course, anyone anyway, will. I was just curious. Why did you tell Countess Mondego 16 years ago that Edmond Dantes had been executed? Hmm? Uh, I, I don't understand what, what, what on earth you're talking about. It's a perfectly simple question. How do you know these things? <sighs> That's, uh, that's quite enough. You, you, you don't understand. Dantes was accepting a letter from Napoleon. That was clearly treason. We both know he never delivered it. Packing a man off to prison with such knowledge is bad enough, but to tell us... Your Grace, I have no idea what is provoking this perverse discussion. Now I ask myself, what did my old friend Villefort stand to gain by telling Mercedes that Edmond Dantes is dead? The answer is... Absolutely nothing. Just as you say, nothing. So why? Well, yet my old friend, now chief prosecutor of France, doesn't gain from this lie. Well, who does? My dear Count, it's far too hot in here, and you're fully dressed. I think it's time we both left. I think the clearest beneficiary is Fernand Count Mondego. I don't understand what this inquisition has to do with our business relationship. I'm about to tell you. Sit down, Mondego. I'm an ambitious man, and I have furthered these ambitions by scooping up Bonapartists. But now, with Napoleon on the loose, I find I have, shall I say, a thorn in my side. Once merely an irritation, now potentially lethal. Be lethal in turn? Well, the problem is such that I myself cannot attend to it. So I have a proposition for you. How is your father? Alive, unfortunately. We share the same misfortune. You remember? Why is this door locked? I demand that you release me from this work once. You put yourself no friend of mine. Your father was a loyal supporter to Napoleon, wasn't he? Possibly involved in plotting Napoleon's escape from Elba. Emperor of Thun! An inconvenient parent for an ambitious civil servant like yourself. But then he died, suddenly, and opportunely murdered again some 16 years ago. Emperor Napoleon. The murderer never apprehended. How hard did you look for him? You have no proof, no witnesses. You just have theories, it's just conjectures. On the contrary, I have Count Mondego. Young Mondego, why? Because your son lacked the courage. Mondego is the one who pulled the trigger. He'd never confess in a million years. You're right, he wouldn't, but you just have. <sighs> Monsieur Villefort, you're under arrest for conspiracy to murder. You remember? Dantes? for a gentleman. <laughs> you 
you didn't think I'd make it that easy, did you? Yeah! Finished our conversation in the carriage. So did I. Until I realized. You said the name Dantes. A name that I had never mentioned. What do you want of me? I want to be free of you. The way you obviously are free of me. Just a few answers from you and I shall be gone forever. Ask your questions. Where have you been? Thirteen years in the Chateau d'If. And everywhere else you can imagine. The Chateau D for 13 years. Did you suffer? Are you finished now? I have a good deal on my mind. What happened afterward? Much. Why did you not come to me? Why did you not wait? You married the very man who betrayed. I told you that night on the rocks. Remember that it would never leave my finger, and it never has. Why? You know why. If you ever loved me, don't, don't rob me of my hate. It's all I have. Let it go, Edmond. Let it go. I don't know what dark plan lies within you. Nor do I know by what design we were asked to live without each other these 16 years. But God has offered us a new beginning. God. Don't slap his hand away. Can I never escape him? No. He is in everything. Even in a kiss. My lady. Oh. Where's the Count? Um, the Count would like for you to join him this afternoon. Join him? Uh, yes. In uh, leaving the country with your son. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll have someone bring you to your house, and you just wait there for me. And we just. Thank you. Yes, yes, but. I my, need my, to go home. Yes, back. yes, my, my, my lady. Where's the Count? Upstairs, madam. What's wrong? I'm bankrupt. All my debts have been called in. Also, I'm to be arrested. For what? Piracy, corruption and murder. Did you do all these things? Yes. There is simply not the time to talk about it. The gendarmes are on their way, apparently, so hurry up and pack something. I'm not going with you for now. <laughs> you 
You are my wife. I have made arrangements for us. We should be very well taken care of. Now go and find my son. He's not your son. I beg your pardon? Albert Mondego is the son of Edmund Dantes. Why do you think I rushed off so quickly to marry you after Edmund was taken away? Premature. Well, aren't you a piece of work? So he's the bastard son of a dead traitor. He always was disappointing. Goodbye, Mercedes. You did please me some of the time. You never pleased me. Monte Cristo. Kings to you, Fernand. Edmond. How did I escape? The difficulty. How did I plan this moment? With pleasure. So you've taken my status. And everything else. Except your life. Why are you doing this? It's complicated. Let's just say it's vengeance. For the life you stole from me. Someone has tortured the sword. How did you ever call yourself my friend? We were friends, Edmond. You sent me to hell! Why? Take your vengeance. But know the blood you spill is noble. Blood that will never run through your veins. You're no more a count than I am a commoner! You don't have it in you. Touch him and I'll kill you. Boy, let me explain. It's been explained. I spoke to Madame Villefort on the street. She told me how I was a silly, trusting dupe that my friend, the Count of Monte Cristo, used to get into our lives. Albert, listen to me. I will not! Forgive me for being such a fool, Father. You were betrayed. Of course you're forgiven. You were my friend. I looked up to you. There's a history here you know nothing about. He loved your mother and yet she chose me. So now he intends to steal her away. Get out of my way! 
boy, if I have to, I will kill you. I will not stop now. No, will I. So be it. you left explaining where you'd gone. But now I must explain something to you. Where you've really come from. Up there, you are the son of Edmond Dantes. The man you know was the Count of Monte Cristo. I'm afraid it is true. You are the walking proof that your mother was as much of a whore in her younger years as she is today. You? You let me fight him? Didn't do any good, though, did it? And now I beg you, no more! I want no more of this. Just go. Call it mercy. Merci for none. You've only got one shot. It'll take more than that to stop me. Then I best put it where it will do the most damage. Oh, oh my God, look what I've done. Dagapo! Once again, Satara, God sees you out the corner of his eye. She'll live. I couldn't live in a world where you have everything and I have nothing.
What happened to your mercy? I'm a count, not a saint. Right, priest. You were right. This I promise you. And God. All that was used for vengeance will now be used for good. So rest in peace, my friend. So, Satara. Painful. No. I bought this place thinking one day I would tear it down. But now the only things I care about are walking off this island with me. Let's go home.